I'm just going to do a little bit of brief history um, concerning my ancestors who um, lived in Little Bradley. Um, as a, an addition to the audio tape with photos, as a bit of backup, really. Um, basically, working back from the Underhills, we've got the Coldybecks, Aspinalls, Peshes, and Peveril families, uh, and um, you know, around about the 11th century. Um, and in the early days, the, it was um, owned by the Declares, one of the most powerful families in the country. And the Peverils appear at several periods in the early stages of their family history, um, holding the manors and that sort of thing. With uh, one of my uh, great grandmothers, the daughter of a Peveril, who married a Hammond Lord Pesh. Who was succeeded by several generations of Peshes, all bearing the name Hammond or Gilbert. Um, and one Gilbert in particular held the manor of Little Bradley, and they already owned the manor of Great Thurlow. I'm going to be doing the Thurlows at another period. And um, from one of these Gilberts, we've got um, Catherine, and sometimes known as Baron Catherine de Pesh who is one of my great-grandmothers and uh, she married twice, first to Sir John Aspall and um, then to Thomas Notebeam and then we come down through the generations to the Hinckleys and the Coldebecks and then the Underhills as well and um, in, within the church we, I, I refer to the, mem the memorials all the time in um, All Saints Church Little Bradley there's quite a few memorials in there and brass robins and stonework as well from the 11th century which still stands quite boldly and ver these various effigies and inscriptions sacred to these families um, who all got married, buried, um, christened here as well over time and we've got some of the the monuments with two kneeling figures um, there's a stone shield as well with the arms of the Underhill in pain in Calderbeck, denoting the marriage of my ancestors Thomas Underhill and Thomasine Calderbeck. Then we've got also the headless knight in armour. This is Thomas Knighton, the son of Thomas Knighton and Anne Underhill, and the um, the daughter of Thomas and Thomasine. It's quite well preserved this particular monument and. Um, a lot of them have lost lost their heads. In fact, Tom, uh, Richard Lahunt um, lost also lost his head in in uh, a, a particular one, which was found in the last uh, century. Um, within the last century, in in the uh, grounds of the the churchyard, and, and reaffixed to the head, reattached. So. Um, you know we've got an awful lot of uh, connections here and then I also refer to John Day and, and the Fox's Book of Martyrs um, Alice Hunt the daughter of Richard Hunt and Anne Knighton had two marriages uh, the, her, the first was to John Day the printer and um, he, he before he married her he'd been married before and had 13 children and he had another 13 with her who are shown in the memorial brass on the north wall of the chancel in um, Little Bradley Church. I mean, he was quite um, an important person of his day. He even printed the Queen Elizabeth's Prayer Book in six languages, for example. Um, and his most famous book was Fox's Acts and Monuments, known as Fox's Book of Martyrs. He was born in 1522 and um, set up a business quite early. He, he was quite a highly respected printer of the country and the royal family, um, specialising in luxury editions, for example. Um, he was a, a supporter of the Church of England rather than the Roman Catholic Church, but when Mary came to the throne, he was in trouble 
and um, had to go into hiding for a while. He was even locked up in the tower at one point, but released in 1555. Probably because he had friends high up. Um, and uh, there's um, quite a good memorial, brass actually, about John's life um, in here. <coughs> and an inscription including a pun, which I'll try and read. Here lies the day that darkness could not blind. When popish fogs had overcast the sun, this day the cruel night did leave behind. To view and shew what blued acts were done, he set a fox to write how martyrs run. By death to lie, fox ventured pains and health to give them light they spent in print his wealth. But God with gain returned to his, his wealth again and gave to him as he gave to the poor, both with he had partakes of his pray, pain. Each wife twelve babies, and each of them one more. Alas, was the last increaser of his store, who mourning long for being left alone, set up this tomb herself, turned to a stone. This was done in 23rd of July, 1584. There's also a memorial window given by Alice the Stationer Company in 1880 as a mark of respect to John Day, um, who was one of the first masters of the company. Then we've got the John Hunt and Jane Colt brass in the floor, um, which says, Here lieth the body of John the Hunt of Little Bradley in the county of Suffolk, Esquire, who married Jane, the eldest daughter of Henry Colt, of Candish in the said county esquire, and had issue by her one son and two daughters, and departed this life the fourteenth day of May in the year of our Lord, 1605. I mean, Anne went on to marry a Thomas Soam in the end. So we've got the, the Underhills and the Nightons and the Soames and the Days as well. And, um, of course, further back, the Peshes, descendants of which were there for over 400 years. So, um, and they were there, the Hunt and the Knighton descendants were there into the early 18th century. The last member of the family to live there was Thomas Hunt, who died aged 76 in 1703. There's also a great Bradley, which I'll be doing another time. So, basically, we've got all these people that we're connected to here. And there's up to 50 people entombed within the church. So it's um, a very rich source um, for the family tree. Right, I'm stopping for now. Hold on a minute. We're carrying on with the audio tape now. Now well, here we go. This is Sheila. It's the 5th or 6th of August <coughs> 2010. I'm up on the family tree trail holiday in Suffolk. And I'm at a little church called Little Bradley. In fact, this goes on from another tape. So this could be part two. I've just managed to get hold of the key from the village where it's kept quite uninhibitedly in a little box at the end of someone's gate and um, someone's gate at the end of their garden anyway I've come in and I've taken lots of photos of the church it's, it's probably not changed much since um, apart from it's probably less colourful after the um, invasion of Cromwell who probably did a lot of damage when he came in. It's left very plain, very basic. But there are a number of brass plaques and a monument to the Hunts. And they are all connected up with Anne Knighton, who was Anne Depeche, I, I think. I've got to go back.
can check my notes there. I've now come across another plaque. Now, she wasn't a Depeche, um, Anne Knighton. Um, she goes back down to eventually the um, Underhills. She was and it's a while back before she was a pair. She was Underhills, Calderbecks, Hinkleys, Note Beams, then Peshes. So I didn't get my history totally right there. That's why I'm actually intervening in the tape occasionally. Right back to the tape. Um, here lies the body of Thomas Sam of Little Bradley in the county of Suffolk, Gent. Died the 12th of October, 606. Um, I can't really read all of it. Married Elizabeth Arlington, daughter of Robert Arlington, Summit Heath in the county of Cambridge, Esquire, by whom he had five sons and two daughters. The said Elizabeth erected this small monument for perpetual memory in his name. May 16 looks like 12. So that's the Soames lot. They're all connected up. If we go back to Anne, she she married twice. So um, she was married to Thomas Nathan and then she married Thomas Soames. Whether it's the same one over here and maybe she died and then um, he married again or something like that. And then there's a little thing in the, in the wall here. Here lieth the day that darkens could not... Here lies the day that dark could not blend when poppeth fog bad oak calls fume. This day the cruel night did leave behind to view by death to life. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, it's a monument brass at Little Badly. And it's to do with the days. That's the only name I can... Um, there's a little tiny thing in the piscina. Um, it's not the same, it's not uh, the same one, I don't think, as that one there, is it? But it could be, could be. Right, so that's, um, there's another plaque on there, just sacred to the memory of the Reverend Edward Amps, M.A., formerly a foundation scholar of Emmanuel College, Cambridge, and rector of this parish from 1894 to 1902, who died on the 6th of April, <coughs> 16th of April, 1902, aged 58. Yeah. This is where my ancestors are buried in a vault underneath somewhere here. Up to 55 were supposed to have been buried here, and there were once brasses, um, but a lot was destroyed by Cromwell. Um, so it's very plain and very basic. There's a lot of flies in here as well. But, um, it doesn't look like it's used very much. Right, this will have to go on to part five because um, I'm only allowed to go up to 15 minutes on YouTube. I mean, I have got this in complete on, on my own individual DVDs and things. It's in the complete thing. But I'm having to divide it up. So I'll see you again in part five to continue this visit of Little Bradley All Saints in 2010.